FTX founder Sam Bankman Fried is fighting extradition to the U.S. after being charged with eight counts of criminal conspiracy and fraud charges. The criminal investigation comes as Congress is also investigating why FTX collapsed. Investor Kevin O'Leary of TV Shark Tank, which is produced by our parent company Disney, was among those affected. Here's his part, a part of his testimony before the Senate Banking Committee about losing millions in the crypto crash. I entered into an agreement with FTX to be a paid spokesperson. I was paid approximately $15 million for these services, plus approximately $3 million to cover the portion of the taxes due. The equity is now most likely worthless, and the accounts have been stripped of their assets and, interestingly, financial records. I've written up all off to zero. The collapse of FTX is nothing new. While this situation is painful for shareholders, employees, and account holders, in the long run, it does not change this industry's promise. And Kevin O'Leary joins me live now for more on this. Kevin, thanks for being on. I know you were a critic of cryptocurrencies before investing in FTX. So what changed your mind? And, and what was it about FTX that won you over? You know, I guess lecture a lot uh, in many colleges and universities. And what I started to see happen, and a lot of these are graduating cohorts of engineering classes where about a third of them are going to be entrepreneurial. That's why I do this. And I slowly started to see that the majority of the class the, the ones that were really great coders wanted to go work on blockchain. And at the same time, the regulatory environment was changing. It was getting more open in jurisdictions like Canada, Switzerland, United Arab Emirates, Abu Dhabi, et cetera. So it, it occurred to me as an investor, you can't put this much intellectual capital to work and not expect incredible outcomes. And so the hottest hands over keyboards today work on the blockchain and crypto technologies. And that's as a result, I've become an investor. When things change, I change. I'm a, I'm, I'm a fiduciary. I have to go and decide where to put capital to work. And certainly I look for new opportunities. This is like being able to invest in the internet in the early, early days. Now, Kevin, you defended Sam Bankman Freed after FTX's collapse. And you even said that you would back him again if he came to you with another opportunity. Why is that? And has his arrest changed your thinking there? Well, I, I said that before there was any allegations of, uh, of all of these nefarious activities. But my point is, for the last 15 years, I have often invested in entrepreneurs that have experienced catastrophic failures, and I will continue to do that. Now, regarding Sam bankman fried he has to clear his name. I don't know what the outcome is going to be. Nobody does. Clearly, he's been charged, and we're, we're beginning of a legal process. Obviously, I can't invest in that. But my point is entrepreneurs learn from catastrophic failure. And for the ones that are able to come out the other end alive, they're better off for it. And now, Kevin, if he is convicted, how would you like to see him held accountable? What does justice look like to you? Well, I've asked to be put on the credit committee. I've applied for a position there. Um, normally in venture investing, eight out of 10 investments would fail. And that happens all the time. In fact, you know, if, if I had to sit in front of the house Every time one of my investments fail, I'd need an apartment there because that's just <laughs> the nature. That's the nature of, of venture investing. The two unicorns you get out of 10 are how you make your returns. I, I guess what I want to do now with this one is stick with it. I, I intend to teach this in my courses in class. Um, I want to stay with it. I want to try and recoup as many assets as I can. I'm putting my own resources into a forensic audit. I'm intrigued by how they're able to scrape all the, the, the files, the transaction files, you heard uh, from John Ray as well that he has to put this piece together. But the credit committee would be a good place for me to go to work and try and recoup as much capital as I can through Madoff-like clawbacks. And Kevin, you said in your testimony that we need to get to the bottom of what happened at FDX. But you also say we can't let this collapse cause us to abandon, in your words, the great promise and potential of crypto. So knowing what you know now, what's your advice to those who may be considering investing in crypto but aren't super comfortable with the space? Well, I think the lesson learned by all is that you cannot invest in an unregulated exchange or broker dealer. That's primary number one. And so and I, I must say, I, I sensed in, in, the, in the house on the floor of the, that Senate hearing yesterday, a, a, th there's a frustration now. The, the, these leaders, these lawmakers, these policymakers have had enough of this. They don't want to keep having hearings every six months for the next crypto company to blow up and go to zero. So I expect to see some very swift reaction to this now that it's so in front of the public eye and every week another billion lost. People are tired of this. There's a way to solve it. You simply regulate it the way we do stocks and bonds 
And now's the time to do that. O'Leary, we appreciate your time today. As always, thank you. Take care. Thank you. You too. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.